save the best for last in the eighth grade class. You guys are almost there. I know what the feeling is. You guys are the top dogs in the building. All right, you're about to move on to high school soon. That is very, very exciting. Okay? Okay, you're going to stop talking while I'm talking. That's what we're not going to do. That's a good segue, by the way. This is going to be uh, pretty direct and pretty clear because that's how I like to operate. I don't like gray. So we're going to start off with me giving you my expectations for this school year. And then we're going to end with a lot more positivity. All right. I know my stuff is the things that you all don't want to hear nor care about, but it's equally as important. So for those of you who don't know me, I am Mr. Harris. I am the new principal of Marina. I flew all the way from Indiana to live here to be with you. I spent 10 years in the high school space teaching social studies, the best subject in school. Yes. Right. Woo! Yes. <laughs> the different seat. Right there. And I spent three years as an assistant principal at a middle school. Okay. Ms. Hayes, do you want to do it now? You want to do it? Okay. Um, so, I'm used to working with older students. This is my jam. Uh, before we get started on expectations, let's start off the top with what my expectation for is now. I know you have them, so make sure you put them away. All your cell phones. Teachers, if you can give me a second to check and make sure all cell phones need to be put away, put them away. You can have them, but put them away. I need you focused on what we're talking about today, not want to play a game, not texting somebody, none of that, not checking your Instas or whatever you have. Thank you. Some background. The reason it may appear that I am so strict is because school for me was a second home when I was growing up. My home life was not the best. I saw drug abuse, I saw physical abuse. We were extremely poor. Sometimes I didn't eat at home and school was the place I could get breakfast, lunch, be with my friends, feel safe and make connections. School was my second home. I loved school. It was a safe place. My personal goal is to make this school a second home for all students who come here. A place where you feel seen and feel heard and are safe. But in order for us to do that, we must have clear expectations for how you will be when you are here. I'll be honest, I've heard the stories of how it used to be or what it was like. So let me be clear, those days are over. Those days are gone. It is not like that anymore. That is why I got this job. Everything we're going to talk about is in the student family handbook. So if you have any questions or comments, you can come talk to me. Or you can go to the SFUSD website, click on the link, and read the expectations and rules yourself. It's all there. We're going to start with the consequences first. What will happen if you do not follow these expectations? The first is going to be a correction. Let's just use the cell phone as an example. If I see it, I'll warn you. Put it up. If I told you, no phone, put it away. Warning. Two. Second time. Oh, you still have it out? Put it up. By the way, I'm going to call your parent or guardian at the end of the day to remind them that I had to say it twice. Number three. If I see it again or get corrected again, you're going to get a call home. This is number three, the third phone call, or the second phone call, and you're going to spend your lunch in my office by yourself. If it keeps on going, you won't go outside either. And another call. 
If it continues, you can have after school detention. You will get detention. Raise your hand if you want to be with me on a Friday before the weekend after school. No takers. It's not that fun. And a parent phone call too, by the way. If you continue, you can have some in-school suspension time in a different room all day. Parents involved, behavior plans, and if we continue, if we go real deep, I will simply suspend you from school. I will show that I've done everything I could, give you every chance to correct your behavior, every opportunity to correct yourself. And if you want to continue, you can go home and explain to your guardian why your principal had to suspend you. And if you really, really want to press it, we can have me, you, your guardian, meet in my office and have a conversation on if this is the best school for you to be and maybe I can find you somewhere else to go. And we can talk about expulsion. That's not what I want, but these are the corrections that will happen. The first one is the bonus. Man, let me be clear. You all are allowed to have a cell phone at school. You can have it. I know you have it. You can have it. But what you can't do is have it on, out, in class. And, pay attention, the hallway. Because what's happening is you guys are on your phone texting, walking real slow, slow, slow. And then you're late to class. Look up, put your phone away. You'll get to class on time. No issue. No phones out in class in passing period. If your teacher has a system to monitor, that's what we'll do. But let me assure you, I am in the building a lot. I walk around the building, I show up in class. And if you are not allowed to have your phone in class and I walk in class, I will simply walk up to you and say, give me your phone. If you refuse, you can come with me, and your parent can come, and you can tell them why you refused. P.E. I want to underscore this. For obvious reasons, a locker room, changing rooms, nobody should have their phone. It's too risky for people to do things they shouldn't with their devices while people are trying to change clothes. That is why your PE teachers have explained to you, expressed to you, told you, there are no phones in PE. Hallway and tardy expectations. I have told the teachers that when the bell rings, they will walk into their rooms and they will shut their door and they will begin class. If you are late, you're going to have to come to get a pass so that we can track who is showing up late all the time and those consequences will ensue. Go to class. Be on time to class. If you are late, that's on you. I'll be honest, I have been impressed. When I've been in the hallways, everyone I've seen has had a pass while class is going on. They've either had a paper pass or a lanyard pass, and you are good to go. But you have to have a pass to get out of class. You do not want to see me in the hallway and you not have a pass. Then we will have a problem. General expectations. Pay attention to the red. Do not walk into class right when class begins and say, can I get a pass? No, you cannot. You will not get a pass for the first 10 minutes of class. Do not ask. Go during passing period. When class is about to end in 10 minutes, don't ask for a pass. The answer is no, you will not get a pass. If you do get a pass, I shouldn't see you visiting your friends in other people's classrooms. I shouldn't see you going to the office if you have a restroom pass. 
go where you are supposed to go, and then go back to class. Do you understand that? Say yes, so I yes. Louder, please. Yes. Thank you. We have had a phenomenal start to the year. Every staff person in the building, every visitor from the district has said, there's lots of stuff going on at other schools, but here at Marina, we have things in order over here. And we will keep it that way. Use the restroom during passing periods. Restroom passes are five minutes long. If I catch you outside with the pass and you've been out of class for 35 minutes, we will have a problem. Use your pass, do your business, the class. Students should use the restroom closest to their classroom. It's so funny, I used to work with older kids. I understand how it goes. I'll catch you at the bottom floor when your class is all the way on the other side of the school on the third floor. That doesn't make any sense. Go to the restroom closest to your classroom. Wellness, nurse, counseling, the main office. If you guys need support, if you're having a particularly rough day and you just need a place to go to get through it, you have the opportunity to do that. I'm not telling you that you can't, I want you to. But I want you to do it the right way. I want you to do it the right way. If you can get a pass, get the pass and go. If it's an emergency, there was one student the first day of school, had an emergency, she was still some school away, and I just sent her to my office for a quiet space. We can work through it, but we gotta do it the right way. Lunch and the yard recess has been phenomenal. You guys know the procedures, continue to follow the procedures, and we'll be good to go. Walk to the cafeteria, don't run. You know the line is long, it's not gonna change. Keep your hands and feet to yourselves. If you are in the cafeteria, in the build, building, stay in your seat, or I'll tell you to leave. Sit down and eat, talk to your friends. Once you're up and done, get out. You can stay, but if you're gonna be up running around, run around outside, not inside. Food and drinks. Now, I wanna make a quick caveat. Yes, there are tables and benches outside on the yard. You can continue to eat there. The problem is, the food on the yard. I picked up a pizza box the other day from somebody. What else is happening on the yard after lunch? PE. Huh? PE. It's a classroom. You all do not want to be disrespected. I know that. So why would you disrespect the PE classroom space by leaving your food out there on the yard? If you would like me to be even more strict in this space, I can. If we are having problems picking up our food after ourselves, then I can restrict it further. If you eat on the yard, you better throw that food away. And if it becomes a problem, I'll lock it down even further. Is that clear? Clean up out of here, For those of you playing sports, who are my soccer players in here? Where my soccer players at? Uh, the goals were left out today. You left the goals out. If that is a problem, you won't use it anymore. Do you understand? Put them away. No contact sports. I don't want people getting hurt. I had to call 911 the other day. I don't want people getting hurt. Be safe. End of day expectations. And really, from the beginning of the day, as you've seen, no one is going in and out anymore in the front door. When you come in, from now on, you will come off the gate off Chestnut Street. Your parents can drop you off and pick you up at the gate in the yard on Chestnut Street, on the side. That's where I want you to come in the building. That's where I want you to leave the building. Some of you ride a particular bus, You'll go through the front doors like you always have, but the majority of you will go out on the side gate on Chestnut Street. These are the procedures. If you take the city bus, that's on you. Get there on time or you'll be late. We're almost done with the boring stuff that you all don't like, but it's important. 
And this is the mic drop moment for most of, of you. There is a dress code. The district has a desk dress code. You can go to the website and look it up if you want to. It exists. I've been very nice to all of you this week because I wanted to get to know you. I want you to have a solid week. But starting on Monday, no student will be allowed to wear a hat or a hood in this building anymore. You seem confused, so let me repeat it. I'll wait, so no, I'm not taking questions. There's no questions. You listen. Starting Monday, no student will be wearing a hat or hood in the building anymore. I will correct you, staff will correct you, and we will follow the correction protocol we talked about at the time. If you don't like it, too bad. That's the district policy. That's the dress code. Trust me, my high schoolers got used to it. My middle schoolers got used to it. You will too. Clothing, <laughs> if you want to call them shorts, fishnets, tops that barely cover the top of your body at all, cuss words on your shirts, no, that is not the dress code. If you have any confusion, please go to the student handbook, but most of you already know when you walk out of your house that you should be wearing what you're wearing. Cover up appropriately, you will have no problem. If you get dress coded, you will try to find you support to get different clothes. And if you have an issue, me, you, and your parents can have a conversation. This begins Monday. I need us to be in a new place to focus on what we need to focus on. These are my expectations. I am cool. It may not seem like it now. I am chill. But you will follow my expectations. All right. Now, to the good stuff. Give it up for Ms. Jones, everybody. All right, Marina Penguins. All right, wow. Big kids on campus, eighth graders. Woo! Yeah, clap it up, yeah! Y'all the big dogs. So being the big dogs also comes with some responsibility, right? So you're in the position now to lead, right? To mentor our younger students. So please, please be the, be the example, right? One of the main and important things you can do at Marina in leadership is to play a sport. At Marina, we offer things that no other schools have. So I'm gonna go through a few of them, all of them, because they're all important. And I'm gonna tell you how you can be a part of it. The first one is softball. Anybody in here play softball? All right, clap it up. Our softball team made it to playoffs last year. That's right. And our girls out there killing it. Soccer, we offer both boys and girls soccer. Baseball, that's already started. That started yesterday. I was at the field watching and I'm very impressed. I saw a lot of you last year really put in the time and the effort and the work over the summer to be ready for now. Okay, it's your time. Basketball, we have our boys and basketball, boys and girls basketball program. Our girls made it to playoffs last year, and guess what? I got a new coach for the boys. I want us to be a championship school, and I need people who can get you there. So I, with my resources, took one of the coaches from Claire Lilienthal, who made it to the championship last year, and that's the plan, is to get you there. Volleyball, we're the only school that has a boys volleyball team. And last year, 
Ray Chan, if you played on the boys' volleyball team last year, you were a part of the first volleyball team for boys' middle school in the district. That's really important. Clap it up for our boys' volleyball team. In our big one, track. Woo. Raise your hand if you participated in track last year. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Woo. But, do you see how, go, put your hand back up, put your hand back up. Look around. You see how many people have their hand? It should be everybody. Everybody in here can participate in track. I was telling the seventh graders this last, uh, the last assembly, last presentation, and I don't like to do the same thing over and over again, so I'm gonna come at it from a different angle with you. This is your last year in middle school. This is the time for you to leave your mark behind, to start a legacy. You are the building blocks for our school. So whatever you leave behind, it will continue. You set the president for the next generation of athletes. So leave your mark here this year at Marina. Everybody in here, I want you to participate in athletics in some way, shape, or form. You don't have to play the sport to be a part of it. We're a family, and that means we're all gonna take care of each other. And there's different roles that we need in a family. We need managers, we need mascots, we need cheerleaders, we need a cheer team. We need people in the audience. We need people representing Marina. So my challenge to you all this year is to come to at least two, two sporting events each season. So right now we have our softball, baseball, and our boys soccer. Now I know boys soccer is it's out there, it's far. But if you are out there cheering them on, they're gonna play harder because they know that you're there supporting them. So please, 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 please come to at least one of those sporting events, hopefully two. Also, if you see me there at the sporting events, come say hi. I may have something for you. Next, wrestling. One of my exciting, exciting teams that we got to do last year. Raise your hand if you were on the wrestling team last year. Okay, all right. So we had a few people that were on the wrestling team and I mean, it just blew my mind. We mopped the floor with every school. We beat Presidio, we beat Willie Brown, and we beat other schools that thought they were gonna come across the bridge in our house and tell us how it goes. We told them, we showed up. We were number one in the district for middle school wrestling our first year. So if you are interested in trying out for wrestling, I encourage all of you to come. It's a great confidence boost and you will have a family by the end. And our last one, a special program that is only offered at our school, nowhere else in the district. I don't even think other districts could even offer this. We have our own MMA club. Raise your hand if you are part of the MMA club. You see these people? Watch out for them. You don't want to mess with these people. They are skilled in a variety of mixed martial arts. And I've been in there. And I've had some of them spar and roll with me. And some of them have put me in positions where I was like a pretzel, okay? They are trained. And we want all of you to at least, at some point in time, stop by in the morning in the gym. If we bring it back, I know it's gonna be a great program this year. And that's led by our two PE teachers, Mr. Bordas over there, and Mr. Doyle. Again, a lot of people don't know this, but outside of school, I don't call Mr. Doyle Mr. Doyle. I call him Professor Doyle. Because when you're a black belt, Jitsu, we call you Professor. It's a sign of respect. And I do respect all the hard work he's put in to get that black belt. Mr. Bordas will soon be called Professor. He's still working on it. He's a brown belt, but he's getting there. Again, all of these sports can be a part of your life if you just try, okay? I'm not asking you to go out there and be the best, but I do want you to try. And if you try, that's all we can ask for, and we will take care of you. You don't need any equipment. 
We will provide everything for you. So here's how to make that happen. One, you need to make an account on home campus. Raise your hand if you've already done that. Excellent. Now look around at the people next to you. If you have not created an account on home campus, those are the people you can go to for help. Your coaches can also help you with home campus. All right? We got Coach O in the back. She's going to be uh, leading our boys' soccer program this year. I'm excited about that. But everybody who is a part of athletics will be able to help you. You need to have a completed sports physical. Now that's the big one. Everybody right now in the city, and I mean every school in the city, is trying to make an appointment to get this done. So in order for you to be able to get this done, you need to make an appointment as soon as possible. Even if you're gonna play a sport later in the year, or if you're thinking about playing a sport later in the year, take care of this now so you don't have to wait until the last minute, okay? We also have an urgent care right down the street on Lombard. You can make a same day appointment to get your physical done. If you need help with that, all you need to do is go to number three, the Check the Marina Athletic website. All your questions can be answered on there. If you go to the sports form section, that'll give you a run through of how to make an appointment, how to, how to create an account on home campus, how to get in contact with me for help, who your coaches are, it's also the place that I give away stuff. So if you, if you know me, I love to give away stuff at games. Sometimes I do contests online. But if you don't check that website, you're not a part of that. How many of you remember any of the things I gave away last year? Uh, giant, tickets. giant tickets. Say again. Scandia, a spot to Scandia, that's right. So, moving on to our next slide. Scandia, the magical place. Raise your hand if you got to go to Scandia last year. Was that not awesome? It was the best day ever. So at Scandia, we have unlimited go-karts, unlimited arcade, unlimited laser tag, pizza, all the fun stuff, all of it. And if you play a sport, you have a chance to go to this. Now, because you're all 8th graders, 8th graders get a priority. So if you play a sport at Marina and you're in 8th grade, you get an automatic bid to go. As long as you maintain your grades and your behavior is in check, you are automatically allowed to go to that field trip. We also added in Rock and Jump. That's a trampoline park. They have trampoline dodgeball, they have a trampoline basketball court where you can slam dunk, they have jousting, they have a zip line, all of that stuff for you. But in order for you to qualify, you need to play a sport at Marina, okay? So if that's not enough motivation for you, I don't know what else, um, maybe just throw out cash or something. Um, but I hope to see all of you at the field. Again, if you see me, say hi, I will be cheering for you. There's no way you're going to miss me. I'll be the loud person and be like, yeah. Okay, especially if you're a Jones kid. Raise your hand if you're a Jones kid. Jones kids? All right, so especially all of you. Okay, I'm gonna be with y'all. Thank you, I'll see y'all at the field in the games. Okay, welcome my students. I'm gonna see how much you listened to me yesterday in your classes. I want to, I'm going to say miss and then you're going to say my name, all right? And just a little hint, it happens to be the state that we live in. So miss, yeah, okay. So this year is going to be fun. It's going to be challenging. We're going to get you ready for ninth grade, um, but there's a lot that comes with that. You're gonna see a Google Classroom in your advisories coming up in the next couple weeks that I'm gonna have you on, and it's gonna have all things eighth grade, okay? I'm gonna put things on your calendar that are important. It's really important now to start looking at your email, because you know that's the only way that you're gonna make an appointment with me or talk with me about things, 
okay? And look at your Google Calendar because in high school, you are gonna use this every day in every single class. So we're gonna practice now so you guys are ahead of the game compared to the other students, okay? We are going to have an assembly at some point where I'm gonna go over the eighth grade contract. Everybody signs it or they don't get to walk the stage and they don't get to go to Great America. Okay, so my thing is, is I want every single one of you to go to Great America because I want to have fun with every single one of you. So to do that, we need to make sure that we're following all the things that Mr. Harris was talking about. Okay, don't make it interesting. We had kids last year that weren't able to go to some things because they made it interesting. Don't, okay? My door is up. I'm going to be up and down these hallways. You see me. I put in 23,000 steps, okay, on Wednesday because I was walking the hallway. You'll see me. I'm out during lunch. You'll see me, okay? But if you want to have a more deep conversation because I want to hear you, you need to email me, and my email is up in every single eighth grade teacher's classroom, okay? So, if you need to, you know where to find it, okay? Are you going to have fun this year? Yeah. Oh, that was weak. Come on now, are you going to have fun this year? Are we going to make it fun? Yeah. Hey, I hear, okay. All right, I'm going to give it over to Miss Ward. All right, y'all. My name is Miss H. Miss Ford, technically, but Miss H, I like it better. And I am your new AP, your assistant principal. I am born in, and raised in the Bay Area, just like you, and I've been here all my life. I like to have fun, and especially your eighth grade year should be a year you never forget for the fun. Not for the drama, not for the issues, but for the fun. So ways we're gonna have fun this year, we are going to have new pop dollars, and in advisory, you're going to tell me what you want to purchase at the student store with your pop dollars. So be it, uh, keep an eye out for that um, survey. I have, at my previous school, we sold like croc charms, we sold anime stickers, anything that the students wanted, we sold. This is for you guys. These are things that you guys want to buy. You guys tell me what to order, you get to spend your pop dollars on it. Also, we're going to have monthly cultural celebrations. We will do these celebrations with posters, music at Friday lunches, town halls, and games and contests in advisory. Dances. I heard y'all had a pretty cool 8th grade graduation dance last year that you guys didn't get to go to because you were 7th grade, but I think there should be more. So my goal is to have a Halloween dance, a winter formal, you don't have to attend, Valentine's Day dance and end of year dance. And you guys get the big graduation dance at the end of the year is what I've been told. Also going to have more field trips. So I'm gonna be working with your teachers to schedule these field trips. And we're gonna have the same carnivals that we had last year. Okay, that's it for the fun. Now, here's the context. Miss Callie would like to compete with you guys on this contest. She needs to pick eight people to compete with her. Raise your hand if you want to compete with her. Raise your hand high.
and the winner gets bragging rights because they beat Miss Callie. All right.